Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I'm going to make an octagon of battle. And remember to watch to the end of the video to find out if you've won a fabulous Monster Painter math rock bag. What fun is that? So the very foundation of this project is this plastic tray, which comes from a wheel of St. Agour cheese, a delicious creamy cow milk blue cheese from France that is a flavorful, full-bodied blue but lacks the spiky edge so many blue cheeses have, making it a real crowd pleaser. And yeah, I do work in a cheese shop. These trays hold the cheese in place, both to protect the delicate cheese, as well as to contain the stinky whey that comes off of it. Once the cheese is all sold, the tray is discarded. I have previously used this cheese shop trash in combination with some old cake toppers to construct an ancient classical temple, and I am hoping that uh, this cheese tray will work out as well when I build a much more profane structure. The first step is to take my ratty old piece of sandpaper and scratch up the surface of the tray. This will help the acrylic gesso primer adhere, help the glue adhere, as well as give the surface a more interesting texture. Next, I am going to use a little pinch of mill putt to fill in the small dimple at the center of the tray so that our octagon of battle has a more even, uniform surface. For the uh, ropes or the walls or the boundaries of our octagon of battle, I am going to trim up these plastic razor wire fences to fit the eight sides of our octagon. Cutting them all down to four posts should do the trick nicely. These fences are a ubiquitous part of most Green Army Men play sets and should be much, much easier to source than a St. Agour cheese tray will be. I am also going to take my trusty utility knife and score up the bases of these razor wire fences to help the glue bond them down. This sort of cheap plastic really needs all the help it can get in this regard. Time to put it all together and I am not going to mess around. These kind of cheap disposable plastics can be shockingly resilient to glue, so I have mixed up some JB Weld two-part epoxy resin for this very tough job, and I'm just gonna arrange all the, the razor wire fences around the outside. In order to get a nice snug fit, I'm going to use $70 in petty change and a discarded part of the tray to weigh everything down while the glue sets. The glue has set and the piece is all primed up with acrylic gesso. And now it's time to move on to the base coat. And naturally, I turn to my favorite base coat color, raw umber, a nice opaque cool brown, perfect for the platform of our gladiatorial ring. Next up, I will be applying a dry brushing of titanium white to the mat of our ring. I had originally intended to use an off-white color called unbleached titanium, but I grabbed the wrong pot of paint and only realized the mistake after I had started. It's a small mistake, and so I just went with it. It won't make that much of a difference in the end. Now I'm going to apply a layer of bronze yellow to the outside rim of the ring. This will differentiate this part of the structure from the mat and give it a nice wooden look, building up the overall feel of a gladiatorial ring. On to one of the more time-consuming parts of the project. I will base coat all the bars and posts of the razor wire fence in a dark, cool gray color, a mixture of Payne's gray with a little bit of white and uh, makes for a nice, solid, cool, metally looking color and uh, this whole part of the process seems to take forever but really it takes about 20 minutes at this point i decide the titanium white on the mat is much too clean and bright a white so i give it a watery wash of burnt umber a lovely warm brown color this will make the mat look a little more grubby and it will bring out the textures giving the mat a marred and worn look very suitable for a gladiatorial ring. Back to the razor wire, I'm going to apply a dry brushing of a mixture of Payne's Gray and Pearl White to the posts and bars of the fence. 
This will give it a more metallic look and make it a more credible looking fence for a gladiatorial ring. On to another time consuming part of the project. I will be picking out the razor wire coils with a base coat of iron oxide red. This is the first step in my rusty old metal treatment because naturally my octagon of battle has to be ringed with rusty old razor wire because nothing else will do. The next step in the rusty old metal process is to dry brush a mixture of ivory black and pearl white to the razor wire coils. This is the metal part of the rusty old metal treatment and it's also the part where my phone ran out of memory. As a result, I do the last step, a simple black wash, off screen, oh well. Now let's take a look at the final product. And here she is. The octagon of battle is looking every bit like a grungy and dangerous gladiatorial ring. Obviously this thing could be used in Rumble Slam, a 28mm wrestling game, but it's also suitable for a number of other settings, such as sci-fi and post-apocalyptic, as well as high and low fantasy, or really anywhere you expect brutal gladiatorial blood sports to be played. And here it is in its natural habitat, as the literal center stage of Fight Night, where fantasy battles can take place, like a Beholder versus a Dragon Ogre. That would be pretty awesome. My money's on the Beholder. But there are next more fights, more fights. Let's see here. What's up next? A Warjack versus a Rat Ogre. Another Ogre monster. Well, I think that Warjack might be in a little bit of trouble. But of course, the fight we've all been waiting to see a chaos warrior versus a particularly mean cabbage. Who will win? Place your bets now. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. You must really want one of these genuine Monster Painter Math Rock bags. Well, it's time to draw the name out of the hat and see who won this fabulous bit of Monster Painter brand swag. And our winner is, ooh, I'm so excited, the winner is on this little piece of paper, if I can get it open. Eh, eh, eh. All right, it's Rivers RPG Channel. Well, Rivers RPG Channel, I will be trying to get a hold of you so that I can get your address and mail you your wonderful math rock bag. I'll be talking to you soon, Rivers. Next week on The Monster Painter, I show off my conquest battle scars. Ouch. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell. Monster Painter.